Boom, what up ladies and gentlemen, it's your man 50 Grand Scott Stockton and I'm back with another review, this time with the Canon R6 Mark II and yes, I actually have it in my hands this time. Uh, so we're going to give you a review, let you know whether or not you should upgrade from the R6 to the Mark II and um, you'll be happy to know I've had this for a few weeks and I haven't just jumped out and given it a review just yet because I wanted to put it through its paces. Uh, this bad boy has gone with me on three or four weddings already. Uh, I've used it both for photo and video. I've used it in a church and dark places. I've used it on engagement shoots as well. So I feel qualified right now to tell you guys what this is and what it isn't. So let's get into this review right now. All right, so straight away I want to tell you what kind of review this is going to be. This is going to be a functional review. I'm not going to weigh this and tell you how many grams it weighs versus other bodies similar in its category. I'm not going to be doing that. To me, that's shenanigans. I think you guys just want to know how this performs out in the field, and that's what we're going to get into. The things that I'm going to touch on that I think are going to be important for you guys are things like the resolution, uh, this new sensor that Canon created, uh, autofocus, and I'm going to go into video as well because uh, while I'm not a huge videographer, I do put together videos like these. I do do behind the scenes uh, footage for different shoots that I'm doing as well. And I do some hybrid shooting here and there on wedding days as well. All right, straight out the rip, let's dive into resolution. Okay, so we have a newly developed Canon 24 megapixel sensor that is in the R6 Mark II. Now that's going against the 20 megapixel sensor that was in the Canon R6. Now, you're only talking about four megapixels of an increase here, and you might be wondering, you know, how does that affect the resolution? Is it sharper? Things like that. And I want to say that it, it might be just a pinch sharper. Like, I think if you take a photo from the R6 and a photo from an R6 Mark II, and you put them side by side in Lightroom and zoom into 100%, I don't think you're going to see a difference. I think if you then dial into 200 and 300%, I think you'll see that there's slightly more detail on the Canon R6 Mark II. Uh, but you have to ask yourself if that's worth it. Um, another thing that I think is better in the R6 Mark II, but only slightly, is I think that there's a better color science in here. Um, I think that it's just slightly noticeable. But again, if you stay with your R6 and don't choose to upgrade, uh, you're talking about just like a few tweaks to get the files to match together. But I think straight out the gate, you get a little bit better of a color science in the R6 Mark II files. Uh, and the sharpness from the eyeball test is it's about the same. Resolution is about the same. Unless you start diving into the files and really zooming in, then you'll see that, that, that fractional difference in the, the Mark II files. Uh, but, you know, from just looking at the photos straight up, you know, the resolution looks to be about the same. Uh, that being said, as a guy that shoots weddings, and maybe anybody out there that also shoots weddings or shoots anything to where things can happen really quickly. Um, I do appreciate the four megapixel boost because sometimes I have to crop in. Like if, if, if uh, you know, the grandmother of the bride just darts in the door. I know I just said grandmothers and darting. Some of them old ladies got wheels though, so let me say that. But if they just dart in the door and I have to quickly start shooting, uh, a lot of times things might happen so quick that my composition isn't perfect and that requires me to crop later. So I do appreciate having four more megapixels so that if I have to crop, I can and still keep a very good resolution. Now, while we're on the subject of the sensor, I think we have to talk about low light and high ISO performance. Now, I think that the images coming out of this camera look just as good when it comes to noise as the R6. Uh, I would expect that because we only have four more megapixels. The, the R6 has 20. Um, generally, the lower the megapixels, uh, the cleaner the noise and grain is going to be. And uh, I'm going to show you some footage here and some photos that I took with no artificial light. And uh, it, was, it was nighttime and a fairly kind of dark uh, reception area for dancing. And you can see that even before I edited the images, things look good. And then when you add the edit, I still think they look great. And same with the, the footage as well. So I think you're going to get a great camera with a great sensor that can handle a low light, your dark venues, 
churches, uh, receptions. If, if you don't have time to run and grab your flash or if something happens and you're in a dark room, you're going to get great low light, high ISO performance out of this bad boy right here. Now let's jump into where I think the R6 Mark II shines. Not just over the R6, but over every other camera I think out there except for the R3. And we're talking about autofocus. Okay, so the autofocus in this bad boy is the same as the R3. The only thing that is different is the readout speeds, obviously because this isn't a stack sensor. Now, just straight off the rip, man. And I've used the R3, the R5, the R6, obviously the R6 Mark II. I used to shoot Sony. I have shot Nikon. I've shot everything. This, to me, outside of the R3, is the best autofocus I've ever used. Like, it's, it's insane how intuitive it is to locking on to whatever you want it to lock on to. It's super snappy. I've never really ever had a camera to where... It just knows exactly what I want. It seems to always know who I want. A beauty about the autofocus in this guy right here versus, let's say, its competitors like um, like Sony. I think I think the closest com competitor for this guy would be the Sony A7 IV. Uh, the A7 IV, if you wanted to switch subjects or switch eyes and be presented with those options, you have to map. You have to map a special button to help you do that. This, just straight out the rip, when it, when it focuses on somebody's face, it gives the arrows on both sides. It lets you pick which eye you want to focus on. If there's multiple people in the scene, it lets you pick which face to navigate to. And with this back button controller here, you can just bounce around from person to person so quickly. And you almost don't even need to, because like I said, it's super intuitive in knowing exactly what you want it to focus on, and I love that. And another thing that it has that it does amazing at, especially better than anybody else, including the Sony a7 IV, is it's subject tracking. If you put this in auto, so in the menu you can pick from human to animal to vehicles and things like that, but if you put it into auto, it is smart enough to analyze the scene of whatever you're shooting to figure out exactly which subject it needs to lock onto. You don't get that with anybody else. And with the Sony, I know they have a lot of different things that you can, you can track and um, lock onto. But in their menu system, it looks like you have to go through like 19 key buttons to get to a situation where you can, you can begin selecting stuff like that. And this body, to be able to set it to auto and it just know exactly what you want and whatever scene you're in is amazing. Like it, it's second to none. You can't beat that. And that, to me, is where this camera shines over any other camera in the game right now, except for the R3, is its ability to just make shooting for you effortless. Uh, to be able to just focus on what you need to do, your framing, your composition, and just capture the day or whatever event you're shooting and not have to worry about things like that, it sets this body apart from all the others. All right, let's talk frames per second. In this guy right here, mechanically, you're getting 12 frames per second. Electronically though, you're getting 40 frames per second. And that's great for high action, that's great for sports. Uh, granted, you gotta be careful because this isn't a stack sensor. So if you are shooting sports, let's say you're shooting from the side, you're shooting tennis, and my man's coming down with the racket, you could get some bend, you could get some warping. Uh, but if you position yourself in uh, good positions, let's say like sports where somebody's coming straight at you, you don't have to worry about things like that. And even if you're shooting tennis, or things that involve like a baseball bat or golf or something like that, and you're, you're concerned with warping. If you're shooting at 40 frames per second, you're still gonna get some good shots in there. Um, I also wanna say that because this isn't a stack sensor, um, you will, you can, if you're shooting electronically and silently in a dark situation, if your shutter speed isn't low enough, you can get some banding in the, and some flicker in the lights. So that's something to be uh, concerned with as well. Um, but 12 frames per second mechanically and 40 electronically, you can't beat that, man. Burst mode, the burst mode is 110 raw files in a single burst. That is a crap load. Uh, and if you're shooting anything like I am, when it comes to weddings, portraits, or anything like that, that's more than enough than you'll ever need. Uh, sports, that's still great for sports as well. Now, it will fill up, and because the, the cards that we're using here are SD cards, you know, you're not getting the fastest readout, read and write that you could get, if, let's say, if you had a CF Express or a, an XQD card. But it's still great enough to get anything and everything that you'd want, especially shooting events and weddings and portraits and things like that. 
I would say that it's best for, you know, your portraits and your events and stuff like that. But with 40 frames per second and limited rolling shutter, I do think that this can make for a good, uh, a really good sports camera as well. Let's jump right into video. Okay, so straight out, if I'm looking at the files that I used to get from my R6 versus this guy, my C-Log3 files, I feel like the Mark II is slightly sharper um, without any adjustments added to it. You're looking at 6K oversampled for 4K, which means a lot more details. I think that's where you're getting the jump there. Uh, what I really love, what I really love about this is that there's no recording limit on this. I used to hate that. So if you're shooting something that's going to take longer than 30 minutes, let's say something like a podcast, uh, and you got the camera there, you're going to shoot the video, you're going to strip out the audio, upload the audio for your podcast, use the video for YouTube, what have you. You're probably going to go over 30 minutes. And with the old R6 and the R5, you got that 30 minute uh, limit, it's just going to stop on you. This guy has no limit. And some might get worried, let's say, about overheating. But in my use so far of this guy, I haven't seen anything that comes even remotely close to this guy overheating. Um, I also like that they, they have a, a nice overheating icon that lets you know where you're at at all times. That's helpful. One thing that I can say that is still a bit of a disappointment so far is that you still get some wobble in the corners if you're shooting with wide angle lenses. Like right now I'm shooting with the 16 uh, millimeter RF lens. Uh, if you're shooting with the 15, what is it, 15 to 30 RF lens. If you're shooting with anything wide currently, um, I believe you're gonna be still seeing some wobble. So I hope that they uh, fix that in the near future. Because I like using uh, my 16, the, the super wide lens here, for my vlogs and things like that. And it can be a little distracting in the corners if you constantly see that wobble happening. Now, another thing that I really love about this camera, especially if you're a hybrid shooter, is this switch at the top that takes you from photo to video very easily. On the R5, it's kind of a pain. you got to hit a button, then you got to touch something on your screen and then something else on your screen. This makes it super easy, especially if you're a hybrid shooter, to just go from photo to video and it just keeps your settings and you just you can just keep on rocking. I love that about it. Uh, something else about this uh, camera that I thought was gonna be a pain in the ass is the on-off switch here. Because they moved it so that they could have this switch here from photo uh, to video, uh, they put it over here. Now at first, my muscle memory using the R5 and the R6 uh, I found it kind of a pain in the ass at first, but now because of the benefits that I'm getting with the photo to video switch, I actually kind of like where it's at. Now, another thing that I really like about the R6 Mark II versus the R6 and actually any of the other mirrorless Canon cameras is they've upgraded this little joystick in the back, this directional joystick here. And I like it. Like it's, it sticks to my fingers a lot more when I'm moving around. It just feels more tacky to the finger. And uh, I don't know, I just like the feel of it. The body for this thing is essentially the R6 with just these button changes. And I like the button changes. I thought, that, I, thought I wasn't going to like them at first. Um, but after using them multiple times, I appreciate the changes. I appreciate having the on-off there just because I love having this video photo toggle so much. And I love the new joystick uh, pad in the back. Okay, so to sum this all up, uh, who is the R6 for? I mean, if you're trying to get into the Canon mirrorless system uh, and you're currently shooting DSLRs and you're wondering if you should get the R6 or the R6 Mark II, I say you go R6 Mark II because you're going to get improved performance on video. You're getting a little bit more megapixels, but you're getting that amazing autofocus that you get from the R3. So for me, it's a no-brainer there. If you have the R6 and you're wondering if you should upgrade now, to me, that comes down to uh, if you're a professional and you're making money, how much money are you making? Are you making enough to where you can, you know, sell the R6 and only have to spend a couple hundred more to get the R6 Mark II? If you're making enough money to do something like that, I say do it because you're getting, like I just said, you're getting improved video. You're getting more megapixels. If you're like me and you have to crop a little bit, those four megapixels do help. And you're getting the improved autofocus. So I think for me, if you have an R6 and an you're wondering, should I go to the R6 Mark II? If you're making enough money, why not? Why not have the best that you can have in your hands? Um, I would definitely say make that uh, make the jump. But if you're not making that much money and you're still shooting with the R6, the R6 is an amazing camera. It's not a necessity that you make that leap. 
Now, that being said, there was one downfall that I did see with the R6 Mark II, and this scared the absolute shit out of me. Uh, the last wedding I was shooting, it was during the ceremony. We were getting close to the first kiss, and uh, all of a sudden, I had everything lined up in here. I'm using the 70 to 200, and I get an error that pops on the screen that said something to the tune of, I think it was error 20. Uh, turn camera off, take battery out, pop back in and turn it back on. So I panicked. I did, I, I do shoot with two cameras. So I did have the R5 there ready to go in case something happened. I turned it off quickly, took the battery out, slid it back in, turned it back on. It was back to where I needed it. And I began shooting again, but that scared the, that scared the ever living daylights out of me. I don't know what that is. Uh, there is no firmware updates right now. As of the time I'm shooting this to fix something like that. I hope they do fix that because that is a very scary proposition, and somebody might be like, well, why don't you shoot with two cameras? Well, I was shooting with two cameras. But at the time, I had this guy up to my eye, and I'm shooting with the 70 to 200 when that happened. If the first kiss happens in the amount of time that I'm setting this down and getting the other one on my camera strap, you know, I'm screwed. So that, to me, is something that needs to get addressed as soon as possible by Canon, because nobody needs to be on a wedding day or in the field in, at a critical moment and have a freeze up like that happen. That being said, I do think that this is an amazing camera. The autofocus for me is what does it. And uh, right now, I'm gonna leave you guys with some sample images and sample video uh, from the R6 Mark II on these past few wedding days and the other shoots that I've been doing. Thank you guys for tuning in. Please subscribe, please like, leave some comments. Uh, let me know what you guys think about this review. Let me know what you think about the Canon mirrorless system. If you like Sony or if you like Fuji and Nikon and you guys want to, you know, toot your horns as well, put it in the comments. Let's have a discussion. But I thank you all for tuning in. And until next time, peace. If you're allowed to have something on the menu that the bride does. Thank you.